हेलो फ्रेंड्स वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ द ड्रग द डिफिनीसन इज डिस्पर्सन ऑफ ड्रग थ्रू आउट द बॉडी यू नो दैट इफ यू आर गिवेन इंट्राफेनस ड्रग देन द ड्रग इज गोइंग डायरेक्टली इन टू ब्लड और इफ द ड्रग इज गिवेन ओरली देन इट इज एब्जॉर्ब इन टू सिस्टमिक सर्कुलेशन एंड फ्रॉम देयर ब्लड विल मूव फ्रॉम वेसल्स टू एक्स्ट्रा वेस्कुलर स्पेस दैट इज इंटस्टिशियल स्पेस और मसल्स और इंट्रा सेलर स्पेसेस सो दिस इज द बेसिक मैकेनिज्म बी हाउ द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ ड्रग ड्रग विल मूव फ्रॉम वेस्कुलर स्पेस टू एक्स्ट्रा वेस्कुलर स्पेस नाउ वन इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट दैट वंस ड्रग इज एब्जॉर्ब मोस्ट ड्रग टू नॉट स्प्रेड इवेंटली थ्रू आउट द बॉडी टू टू मेनी रीजन्स नाउ सो टेकिंग एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ वाटर सोलबल ड्रग सच एज एंटी हाइपर सेंसिटिव ड्रग वन एग्जाम्पल इज एटेनोल so this they are the water soluble drug so they will tend to stay within the blood and fluid that surrounds the cell that is water soluble drug tend to stay within the blood or interstitial space wherever water or fluid is present fat soluble drug such as anti anxiety drug one example is clorazepate it tends to accumulate within the fatty tissues so we have seen that drugs do not spread evenly throughout the body moving to the next slide some drugs concentrate mainly in only some part of the body okay because those tissues those part of the body have a special affinity for the drug one example is iodine iodine concentrates mainly in thyroid gland as you are knowing there are some drugs which penetrates different tissues at different speeds and it will depend on the ability to the cross membranes okay so drug penetrate different tissues at different speed depending totally on the drugs ability to cross membrane clear one example is there ribavirin which is a fat soluble drug so it rapidly enters the brain whereas penicillin which is water soluble don't enter brain rapidly clear as you know plasma membrane is made up of lipid so the lipid soluble drug will easily pass through the plasma membrane now moving to the next slide some drugs leave the blood stream very slowly because what is the reason so if drug is binding tightly to some proteins or circulating proteins which is circulating in the body such as albumin then that drug will leave the blood stream very very slowly okay some drugs also accumulate in a specific organ example is digoxin and imatin which accumulates in skeletal muscle and heart iodine which i have discussed accumulates in thyroid gland ephedrine and atropine which is accumulated in iris this drug this body part or this tissue have a special affinity for this type of drugs now moving to the next coming to the discussion about plasma proteins okay binding of the drugs with the plasma protein so drugs basically bind with two types of protein the first one is albumin and the second one is alpha 1 acid glycoprotein so the albumin is basic plasma protein so it will bind acidic drugs mainly whereas alpha 1 acid glycoprotein the name itself suggesting acid so it will bind mainly basic drugs clear now examples of the drugs which is binding with the albumin so all anti epileptic drugs such as phenytoin valproic acid it will bind to albumin along with it benzodiazepines barbiturates all non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs such as aspirin paracetamol anti microbial drugs mostly sulfonamides tetracycline penicillin warfarin and tolbutamide these drugs will bind to the albumin whereas basic drugs which is anti arrhythmic drugs on almost all anti arrhythmic drugs will bind to alpha 1 acid glycoprotein one example is quinidine here then beta blockers one example is propanolol it will also binds to alpha acid glycoprotein then calcium channel blockers such as verampil and deltagem opioids imipramide okay and linocaine and the mnemonics for this is abc while a for anti arrhythmic b for beta blocker c for calcium channel o for opioids and i for imipramine and l for lidocaine now some clinical cases of the plasma protein so if there is nephrotic syndrome it means loss of albumin will increase if there is increase in loss of albumin then free acidic drugs will increase because acidic drugs bind with albumin so the drug which is binding with any protein is not free okay so that will not cross your plasma membrane or your glomerular capillaries so if there is loss of albumin increases in then there will be more free acidic drugs that will lead to increase volume of distribution now suppose there will be cirrhosis of the liver then albumin synthesis will decrease alpha 1 acid glycoprotein will decrease this two will again increase volume distribution of the drug because this will lead to more and more free acidic and basic drugs 
if there is any inflammation then in inflammation alpha 1 acid glycoprotein increases because it is an example of acute phase reactant it will also lead to decreased free drug okay it will lead to decreased free drug now one drug can bind to many sites on the albumin molecule okay so more than more than one drug can bind to the same site and this give to displacement interaction among the different drugs because one drug is binding to many sites on the albumin molecule or we can say more than one drug can bind to the same site okay these two giving to the displacement interaction among the drugs this is one more important point regarding plasma proteins i am taking an example of the displacement interaction suppose tolbutamide is binded to albumin okay so free tolbutamide is in normal concentration suppose you have given aspirin to that patient then aspirin also binds to albumin so aspirin will bind to albumin and binding of aspirin to albumin lead to increase in free tolbutamide because suppose if albumin is binded to tolbutamide then aspirin will displace some of the tolbutamide okay and then the tolbutamide will be available as free tolbutamide and then it will cross the vessel and will stimulate beta cells which will increase insulin amount and that can cause hypoglycemia one more example very important from clinical point of view administration of sulfonamides which can cause chronic tears in infants how usually bilirubin binds to albumin okay if you give sulfonamides to that neonate then this sulfonamide will bind to albumin then amount of free bilirubin will increase and this can cause blood brain barrier in neonates because blood brain barrier in neonates is not fully developed and it will cause certain neuronal damage in cns which is termed as chronic tears so this is a clinical point of the displacement reactions now bound fraction of drug is not available for the action as we have said okay and this bound fraction is in equilibrium with free form of the drug if free form decreases then equilibrium shift to the right side clear this is the basic now we will discuss about penetration in of the drugs into brain and csf so capillaries of brain have three important points three important characteristic which make it different from other capillaries first one that the presence of tight junction the second one is absence of large paracellular spaces and the third one is presence of glial cells as you can see in this diagram okay tight junction is present along with your this is the glial cells is present okay and these three characteristic make this what you are studying blood brain barrier clear now moving to the next slide so this blood brain barrier limits the in entry of non lipid soluble drugs okay moving to the previous so lipid soluble drugs which will easily pass through the barrier but non polar drug will not pass through the blood brain barrier so blood brain barrier limits uh, limits the entry of non lipid soluble drugs such as streptomycin and neostigmin in addition to blood brain barrier there are some efflux transporters like p glycoprotein or oatp present in brain and choroidal vessels it will extrude many drugs that enter brain they are efflux transporter means transporting drugs outside from the cell clear so these are the two mechanism which is limiting the entry of the drug into the cell the third one is enzymatic blood brain barrier there are monoamine oxidase cholinesterase and some other enzymes which is present in capillary walls which don't allow catecholamines 5-ST acetylcholine to enter the brain so there are three mechanism which is limiting the entry of any drug to brain first one is blood brain barrier itself the second one is this efflux transporter and the third one is enzymatic blood brain barrier now moving to the next so this is all about the distribution of the drug and its penetration into CSF and this so thank